Well, good morning, brother man. How you doing, Jaw? You remember what I promised you? I said, first thing in the morning, I'll take you to the park before we do the vlog. So, what do you say? Do you want to go over to the West Hollywood Park? I know you like that one. Yeah! Let's do it! Well, good morning, guys. Your old pal Jordan the Lion. Like I said, we're going to take him to the park, and uh, he just he seems to really like this one over in West Hollywood. It's uh, got a little bit of shade, and there's always really well-behaved dogs there, so... You know, what more can you ask for? So we'll go hang out there and then we'll go do the vlog today. Now the vlog was actually inspired by something that I watched when I went to pick up Jaw over at Breck's house. It was a movie that I've been a big fan of for a long time and I said, you know what? That is all, I know exactly where almost all of that was filmed. So some of the things are there, some are not, but let's go check it out. Days with Jordan the Lion begin now. Well, this, uh, this bus is advertising scripts for sale. They have the Declaration of Freedom and Peace on the back. Interesting. You want to fund a movie, guys? Well, they're building something out here. A lot of progress since we were last here. So what I'm planning on vlogging when we get back into Hollywood today is uh, the classic Cheech and Chong movie called Cheech and Chong's Next Movie. He's cutting through the football field here. Or maybe that's soccer. I don't know exactly what that's supposed to be. He knows where the park is. He's making a friend. Well, I guess this is what we came for today, is him to get a little bit of a sun bath and watch the other dogs play. Oh, oh, we have some action. We have some movement here. It's funny watching him, he's just now noticed there's another, he noticed there's another dog park on the other side of the basketball courts and he keeps like, Sitting down and then getting up and sitting down. He hears the other dogs barking over there. John, what do you see over there? Well, it looks like the Pacific Design Center has put a gigantic chair out here in front in case the uh, Jolly Green Giant comes to visit or something. So you might remember a few weeks ago when we walked down Hollywood Boulevard, Quentin Tarantino had basically transformed Hollywood Boulevard back into 1969. So today, our vlog on Cheech and Chong's next movie will kind of be in that same vein. Everything that we're gonna be looking for today is pretty much gone, but the actual location is still there, and we'll be able to match up what everything looks like now compared to 1980 when this movie came out. Now our first stop today is actually gonna be across the street from what is now Amoeba Records and used to be Texaco Gas. Now this building in front of us, this is kind of one of the reasons that we're doing this vlog today. It wasn't all that long ago, I don't even think it was a full year ago that I did a vlog called the Mercall Theater. And it was a theater that was once owned by Lon Chaney and I showed you guys what this, what the front of this building looked like then and they've completely redone it all even since then. It's almost unrecognizable from now till then and from when I did the vlog till when it was originally opened as a theater, completely different. So I think this, this vlog will be something in that same vein. So our first stop for the vlog today is actually the first part of the movie, the very first scene of the movie, basically where we first see the guys. And I think it's actually one of the funniest parts of the movie too. It's very Hollywood appropriate, isn't it? A headless walk symbol. Look up there in that apartment, somebody's got like a like a mannequin dummy up there. Well, here's where our movie starts. We see the guys carrying a trash can actually walking down this sidewalk. We don't know exactly what it's for originally, but they're walking past here. I think this used to be the dental office, and you can see all these parking meters that we're gonna be passing in the shot as they make their way up here along this sidewalk. Don't look at the computer. 
obviously different meters, but in the same exact spots as they would have been in the movie as they were walking up here. So then we get the shot from over here and we will see the guys carrying that trash can up along this sidewalk. Now, what they're doing, if you remember the movie, this is when they're, uh, they find the tow truck is right here, parked right up here. We'll walk up closer to it. But they're, uh, they walk up to it and they're siphoning gas. So Chong pulls out a hose and starts sucking up this gas like it's a straw. And uh, they start filling up this entire trash can full of gasoline and then nonchalantly try and start walking it back to their car, which is uh, parked right up the street. The parking space and everything is still there. You can still match it up pretty good. But it's kind of funny because if you match up this Jack in the Box now in 2018 to 1980 when it was the Texco station, it's laid out exactly the same. I mean, it looks, I mean, you can tell it's totally the same place. And in fact, the best way to match it up was uh, you can see the Ivar street sign that's hanging above. You can actually see that in the, uh, the shot. Now this location's not actually on Hollywood Boulevard. This is on Sunset, but it runs parallel to Hollywood. So most of the movie, all the um, driving shots or exterior shots, most of it all was filmed on either Sunset or Hollywood right here in Hollywood. Okay, here we go. Look at me go. Just keep watching. Don't even look at him, okay? All right, man. Be cool. Don't make eye contact. Don't be cool. Or be cool. And the, uh, the guy who's paying for his gas, who just pumped all that, He's right up in here, so they're walking right along here to get away. So what you don't see on camera is they would have been walking it straight up here to one of the spaces right along the side here. Now when they're pouring the gasoline from the trash can into the back of the stolen car that they're driving around in, which is the neighbor's car, it's right here because you can see all these buildings. You can see that's the Ivar Theater in the shot. And you can see all this stuff in the background. This was still a parking lot even then. But when they drive out of here, you can see this lamp post right behind their, their car. And actually, while they're um, while they're pumping and everything, you get some shots where you see the top of that over Cheech and Chong's shoulder as well when they're pouring that in, and they've got the milk carton and all this other garbage that's coming out into the gas tank at the same time. They put it in here, and then they uh, they pull out of here like a madman. Hey, we didn't go, Cornelli. Now our next shot is directly across the street. Now they do this shot about six or seven times when the guys are out driving. You can see this Knickerbocker Hotel is off to the side of here and there used to be an old VW dealership or something like that off to the other side. And you always see them coming down this road because even though they were using a different kind of lens, you can see how that road goes up the same way behind them. So our next shot takes place right here. It's after the guys have been chased away by the uh, the cop. They see the girl walking along the sidewalk and then they, uh, they hit it in reverse and the cop follows them. Then the next shot we see is them parked right here at this stop sign. And this is where Chong lights the joint when they still smell like gasoline and it blows up the car. And if you look hard enough, you can kind of see some of the buildings off to the left in the background. But they're using such an interesting, I'm not sure what kind of lens it is, but it's definitely magnifying everything in the background. So we're not gonna be able to get the same exact shots, but they're parked right at this intersection when that all happens. When they're parked right here, you can see this used to have an awning and it was like a, a nightclub kind of looking front for the Ivar Theater then. All right, our next stop is actually all the way at the other end of Hollywood. It's at um, Hollywood and Sycamore, almost Hollywood and La Brea.
Well, here's our next location. Back in 1980 when this movie came out, this is where the Hollywood Hotel was that Chong is sent to meet Red. Now, this is maybe one of the reasons that I love this movie so much. My dad showed me these movies when I was probably six or seven years old, and uh, I think I saw pretty much all of them. My favorite at the time was Nice Dreams, and then second would have been Cheech and Chong's next movie. Now, one of the reasons was because at that time when he was showing me these movies is when Pee Wee Herman was probably at his highest. He was doing, um, you know, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, he was doing the morning show, the Saturday morning show, uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse, and my dad's showing me this movie, and you see that this is where the hotel is, and when they go in, Pee Wee Herman is the, um, he's basically like the front desk guy, and they're arguing because uh, Red owes money for his hotel room, and I just thought this was so crazy because that was the first time I, I realized that TV was like what TV and movies were, that it was pretending because I, I, I was seeing Pee Wee Herman in this movie cussing at cops and everything and, and in fact when, when he calls the cops and everything and he does that whole, no it's for real this time, we got two crazies walking around here and they, the, the cops still aren't coming, he goes, look I think they're Iranians and he goes, okay then. <laughs> But you see them, uh, they, there would have been like a long staircase right here and you see them all um, like conglomerated out here with the cops and the cops end up putting him in um, like a like a padded cell type deal and they end up taking Pee Wee Herman away. And then later on, Pee Wee Herman's doing a comedy set at the, um, basically the comedy store in the, uh, in the movie and he ends up getting this big like muscular bodybuilding lady to try and beat them up but this is cool because this is also where we realize that red grows weed and he brought a bunch of weed down with him and it's um it's stashed up in his room but they won't let him get his things because he owes money for the nights that he stayed there so they end up basically shimmying up a the the side uh fire escape stairs and um, going in through the window and then they end up going into the wrong apartment where this like German couple is making love and it's hilarious. They're walking through there looking for um, the duffel bag and everything. But yeah, it's kind of crazy to see this now is this whole shopping plaza because even when I moved here, before it was the LA Fitness and all that stuff, it was a Galaxy Movie Theater and right over here was the, um, like over here in this corner right here, this was all the knitting factory. It was like a performance venue. I saw the Flaming Lips, Super Chunk, Guided by Voices, Weezer, like a bunch of bands there. Now it's a CVS, a Vegas Buffet, LA Fitness, all this stuff. Everything has completely changed. Even when the, uh, the two guys like walk down here and start walking down the street, they've redone all these buildings. None of them are the same. But we're gonna go over here because it's actually over here where the um, bus benches are that we have another scene or another shot from the movie. So right here are the bus benches. They're definitely different benches, but this is where Red and Chong are standing, kind of hanging out, figuring out what they're gonna do next after the uh, the cops came and everything to the hotel. And that's where the girl on the uh, the roller skates comes riding up right here. Damn, I can't stand all your pants, man. Oh, don't cut yourself and um, starts uh, giving them like the pamphlet to go to the Oriental Massage Parlor and then also ask them if they have any blow and they don't have any clue what she's talking about. Well, Red doesn't, I'm sure Chong does. Now, across the street, you can see there's some, uh, some kind of signs. One of those was actually still there then. That was the bank sign that you could see in the background. Yeah, here it is. All right. So, right here where that whole kind of uh, meeting would have taken place would have been right caddy corner to where the hotel was which was right here and then when they go to the um, yeah this is where the hotel was and everything you can tell it's still laid out the same way as it was um, at least it all like goes upward and everything so that's where the police raid and everything was now you can't see this corner in the shot but this is actually where the building was for the Oriental Massage Parlor because you can see the uh, they have a sign, now it's a CVS, but they have a sign out front that has the address and it says 7049 Hollywood Boulevard. So they do a pretty good job of cheating so that you can't tell how close the hotel was to the bus benches 
and when they shoot the bus benches they shoot it so you can't even see anything over here but yeah this is where they would have um, red would have went in there and started playing his boom box with all the police sounds and everything and everybody freaks out and comes running out front the women come running out naked and everything <laughs> So then they cheat that shot because they show them like walking along the sidewalk and then they go around the corner and you see Hollywood Boulevard, but that's not possible the way they do it. So they ended up using another corner. So I'll go down and show you what corner they actually walk around. But yeah, this would have been the Oriental Massage Parlor. <laughs> and there we go. There's actually a sign of it. A memorial placard and historic designation. It says on this site, from 1919 to 1985 stood the Garden Court Apartments, the magnificent Italian Renaissance structure, boasted Oriental carpets, baby grand pianos in every suite, also uh, two, I don't know, people have thrown a bunch of gum up there, something ballrooms, billiard rooms, tennis courts, and pool. Hollywood personalities who lived here include Louis B. Mayer, Max Sennett, Lillian Gish, Rudolph Valentino, John Barrymore, and Mae Murray. And there is a picture of what it looked like. And that's exactly the way it looks in the movie as well. One of the things that I love most about this movie is all the uh, kind of guest appearances. You have like um, some great appearances by Jake Steinfeld. You have, of course, Pee Wee Herman. Um, yeah, there's like all kinds of great little cameos. Michael Winslow from the Police Academy movies is in it. Pretty good stuff. It seemed like in a lot of ways they just found comedians that they knew from the comedy clubs and let them do their thing in their movies. What they were best at. Now you do see them driving down this part of Hollywood Boulevard because off to the right you can see the Supply Sergeant Military Supply Store and they drive past that right down this road. So now we're off looking for the corner that they walk around. And I think I figured out where it is based off of when they walk around the corner and what's on the other side of the street. So I think they actually come walking out of this archway to film the movie because if you look across the street, this building right here is the one that you can see all lit up over there. If you check out the formation of the windows and everything, you can definitely tell that's the same building. And so right above it would have been the uh, Coca-Cola advertisement back then. Well, I tried my best to put everything in order that it happens in the movie. So if you go back and rewatch the movie, hopefully a lot of this will make sense to you then, or just with the matchups in here. I think I'm gonna pop in and get a smoothie while we're over here. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, there it is. Tastes amazing. Took a while, but it was worth it. It's kind of ironic. I think uh, Cheech and Chong were almost like a predecessors to Beavis and Butthead. Plus I was watching a documentary on them last night, how Mike Judge started the whole thing. What a great show that was. Now from here, you can actually see the Hollywood Palladium back here in the background, which leads me to figure out that when the woman was walking down the sidewalk, and Cheech and Chong were driving by going, hey baby, get in. She would have been walking over here when it was still a parking lot. Oh man, that's over there, let's go find you. Hey baby. Because the angle that you can see that in the background. Some of these are a little hard to get exact because the way the light is right now, it's not really working in our favor, so I'm trying to give you the best angle possible. So the building's changed and everything right here, but this is where we would have seen them in the car and hit the brakes while the woman would have been pretty much where I am right now. Hit the brakes and they would have went in reverse. Come on, I'll clear a place for you to sit down. Uh-oh, man, be cool. It's very good company. And when they went in reverse, that's where you would have heard Cheech go, be cool, be cool. And then the next time you see the car, you see like the police car about a foot behind him, following him the whole way. All right, I finally got the packages from the uh, landlord here. 
that you guys sent me while I was gone, so thank you. Uh, you did let me know that I was getting a second one of these, so I will return it and uh, get something else. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, thank you, whoever sent that. Thank you, Leslie, uh, for the book. And there was no name or anything attached, but a new um, Medal of St. Christopher for when I travel. Thank you very much, because my other one is, uh, my other one's starting to get tarnished. I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. Probably a bad sign, but it's kept me safe, so now we'll switch over to this one. Thank you very much. Well, I came back home and picked him up. I don't know where we're going. I guess he's gonna decide. I guess he's making me take him to the uh, local park over here, so. Not one of my favorite parks, but he likes it, so we gotta go. That's what he was hoping for. Are you done playing? All right, well, that was a good time. He got to play. We're gonna call it a day here. Let's go home. Well, that's the end of our Cheech and Chong vlog. You know what's crazy about that is as we were standing there where the old Hollywood hotel is in the movie, when I moved to Hollywood, I lived literally right around the corner from there. I mean, that was my block. I walked that way every way every day to school. And at that time I used to watch this movie a lot when I first moved out here. So it's kind of cool, you know, after all these years to see that that's where that crazy wacky hotel that Pee Wee Herman works at is. So I don't know, just one of those things I loved about to do, doing today's vlog. Now, uh, like I said at the beginning of the vlog, it's kind of like thrown back to that Tarantino when we got to see the uh, the new filming of what he's doing now on Hollywood Boulevard. Today, matching up today, was kind of like seeing that in 1980. So, yeah, crazy. I'm going to call it a night. I want to thank Albert Haglin, Steve Malarski, David and Dina Markley, Brad Baker, and um, Scotty Harmon Burnett for making contributions to my channel. Thank you all. And thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night and good.